good morning, afternoon, evening, whatever it is, wherever you are. We hope you're doing well. Thank you for dropping by. Banking, international banking, that's really the gist of it here, can be simple if you set it up correctly. Right, Getting your money from the U.S. to the Philippines has many options. All right, but we're going to talk to you about the way we do it. So, you know what? Let's just jump right in. Let's talk about it. Okay, number one, we are not financial advisors. Seek professional advice, all right? Number two, more importantly, this is one of the three most frequently asked questions that we get. It come by email, comments, everything that goes along with it. Everybody's individual, but... I started thinking about it, and I said, you know what? I'm going to build something that everybody can use. There are parts of this that will not apply to everybody. There are parts of this that will apply to everybody. You can kind of slice and dice, but to get the generalization and the idea, it is a complex matter to set up correctly. All right? We've been doing this for 10 years. All right, that's just the way it is. We're going to tell you what works for us. Number three, hey, look, if you appreciate the effort that we have put forward into this and all of the other videos that we do, support the channel. Just subscribe, hit that thumbs up. That's the best way you can show your appreciation for the effort we put forward. Um, okay, now. I had to build something that would answer everybody's questions. I had to put together information that's going to cover 99% of the people that are out there. It's impossible to cover everybody, but the 99% is pretty darn good, I think. And if you have additional questions, all right, send it to us in a comment, email us, whatever you want. We'll be, do our best to try and answer it. Now, let's jump forward. How we bank from the U.S. to the Philippines is how we bank. It may not work for you. You should be able to use the basic concepts, though. These concepts will work for, I think, everybody. And finally, again, we're not financial advisors. Okay. A couple of things to keep in mind, and we figured this out in the very beginning. None of these are absolutely necessary, but they sure help. First off, we keep a U.S. residence and address. Okay, The, uh, it, the way banks work now and the way scams work now and everything else, the banking industry is actually looking deeper into these types of things. May not apply to you, may never have to worry about it. But we have two people on our U.S. accounts that have limited powers of attorney. If you don't understand how to use a limited power of attorney, if you don't understand the strength of a limited power of attorney, please look it up. Um, it's really important to be able to have somebody Contact those financial financial institutions when you cannot and take care of things. We've never had to use it, but it's there. The Internal Revenue Service, Social Security, and all of our financial institutions are fully aware that we reside in the Philippines. 
Social Security doesn't give a shit where you live. The IRS doesn't give a shit where you live. Okay? They don't. That's just the bottom line. Financial institutions are a little different. Some of them do have a bias on you not living in the country. So before you decide to work with a particular financial institution, you may want to check on that. We keep a U.S.-based T-Mobile phone for two-factor authentication. It costs us 60 bucks a month. Period. End of story. That's the best plan we could find. We've done everything in the past, and all of them have ended up failing. We've had Google number. We've had Magic Jack. We've had um, Skype. Two of our institutions that we deal with will not do two-factor verification over any VoIP line. Just the way it is. None of these are completely necessary, but they do provide a fallback position. And that's what's important to you, is that you're able to get that money. Because you're going to see how it's structured. And how it's structured means, you know something? You're not always going to have a ton of money here. And we'd recommend that you don't, actually. Whenever possible, we've broken down all the terms that we're using here into layman's terms, okay? So a little forgiveness on that is something that we would appreciate. Now, you want to get your money from bum, 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 here in the U.S. to here in the Philippines. It's that simple. And that's what you're doing. We don't recommend that any U.S. Fund funds get transferred to the Philippines by those institutions without you being the triggering event. In other words, our social, my Social Security check does not auto-deposit into my Philippine bank account, although that's a possible option. I don't trust it. My allowance, so to speak, and we'll go into that, doesn't automatically get deposited. So how does this work? Well, so I couldn't come up with a good emoji here or picture or whatever, but we're going to call them banks. These are all areas that put money into your primary bank. All right. So we consider Social Security a financial institution. You paid into it, willingly or not, okay? You're receiving dividends, whether you like how much they are or don't, all right? Every month, boom. We're not here to discuss Social Security disability or any other disability because we've never had to do it. And what I mean by that is, is that the one thing everybody knows is we don't talk about stuff that we don't have experience with. So we don't have experience with SSDI, nor do we have experience with other disability programs. But you can easily find out where it's going to work. We lump pensions into following areas, military retirement, Company-sponsored defined benefit plans, state, local, federal defined pension plans. Now, keep in mind, for those of you that aren't intimately involved in stuff like this, you may not recognize there is a huge difference between a defined benefit plan and a defined pension plan. Most of you it's very hard to find, actually, today, defined benefit plans. Defined benefit plans are much different than defined contribution plans. Things like a company 401k is actually a defined contribution plan. But that's all for another video, which would bore people even more than this one. Brokerages. So... You may have had multiple employers over the years, 
and you've had a 401k and you've rolled that 401k each time. Now you can't roll money from an old 401k into a new employer 401k. So you're going to have maybe multiple 401ks, private, and then if you're still employed, your employer side, your existing 401k, private investments account, private investment accounts, all right? T. Rowe Price, Edward Jones, Schwab, the list goes on and on. All of them are going to end up putting dividends, if you so choose to take them, into your primary bank. And finally, IRAs, Roth, SEP, IRAs, whoops, something flew by, all right? All of those, they're under the control of or administration of a brokerage account. Now, otherwise you then have miscellaneous. Miscellaneous is going to consist of everything else, rental income, accounts receivable and sale of an asset. You know, you may have owned a company or a business and you sold that and you kept the accounts receivable because most buyers don't want to buy cash, all right? Some people do, but most don't. And you're still receiving um, accounts receivable. Payments on debt owed to you and other non-cash transactions. These are transactions that are going to go into the bank. So now you see this is how we set it up. All right. All of this is going to go into our U.S. bank account. And in our U.S. bank account is where we're going to set everything up so that we just don't have to worry about it. And quite frankly, we don't. So our U.S. bank, first and foremost, be responsible. Save a percentage of your monthly revenue. We know, and you should too because you're planning to move, what your U.S. bills are going to be monthly on average. U.S., uh, family, taxes, kids. You may have none of these, but some of you do. We know what our credit card debt is going to be every month. We pay it off every month. We haven't carried a balance on a credit card in 30 years. We do all of our finances on the first Monday of every month. Because then we get to be retired and enjoy the rest of the month. One day to take care of business, the rest of the days to enjoy life. Okay? Um, we do all of our finances in, oh, I have a typo there, in the U.S. electronically. Now, I can't stress this. Okay, I don't have to get up. We don't have to go to the bank. We don't have to wait in line. We don't have to do any of that crap for the for all of the basics. We do it all electronically. The banking apps nowadays are tremendous. Okay, one of our U.S. banks is two factor verification. Our other U.S. bank, we actually our main U.S. bank, we actually have a a, uh, what's called an RSA key fob, and it changes its code every two months. The battery lasts about three years. The bank simply sends another one when they know the battery's going to die. And that two, that's the two-factor verification for those wires. Now, you may have both a checking and a savings account. We keep a nominal balance in our checking and we have a savings for extraordinary expenses, things like cars, property, high-ticket high items. I mean, we already own the, all the property we intend to buy. That's a high-ticket piece. We already own the vehicles that we intend to buy. So we haven't touched our savings in forever, um, you know, a couple of years at least. Uh, so nominal balance. A nominal balance in your checking account, you should probably keep three months worth of your 
living expenses in the Philippines. That's our recommendation. You can make it any way you want. All right. The rest of everything that's left every month. So you've got all this money coming in. The rest of everything left over is our allowance. And quite frankly, our allowance never, it's it's set. We have a set number. We have, you know what? People left, but we do live on our own budget. And our own budget is less than our allowance. So with all of that being said, you can deal with that however you want. You can send it and save it here. You can add it to your savings there. You can do whatever you want. Now, I should structure this by saying this is already gone, what, something like uh, 15 minutes. So we're going to have to do part two to show you how the Philippine banking side is set up. So before I do that, in the comments below, already tell me if this is going in the right direction. I know it's very basic for some of you, but we have a lot of viewers that it's not basic for. Secondarily to that, you know, our Philippine bank accounts, just to tell you what we're going to, the next part, the next part of what we're doing is simple, all right? We're going to tell you how we set up our Philippine banking, how we get the money across, what some of the other options are for you to do that, why we do it the way we do it, okay? And what are the safeguards that are in place? That's all in the next part of this series. So, with that being said, we really do hope you have a great day. Um, and I excuse, I, I caught a cold yesterday. I don't, uh, uh, I'm not as, as verbose as usual. Maybe that's a good thing, huh? Uh, so, have a great day. We hope you're doing well. Be safe.